This week on Supercars Talk, Renee Grace is back in supercars and the porn star is going to sponsor herself. That headline was a little bit of a joke, uh, but it has come out in the news this week that Renee Gracie wants to get back into racing uh, and she's going to sponsor herself out of the profits that she's made from her porn career. Um, my gut feel is that it's a bit of a publicity thing for her. You know, she's uh, got her head back in the news uh, and she's quite happy about it. So, um, you know, more attention grabbing headlines. Uh, people are running with it. Um, one of the big things in the stories, I suppose, is you, we get to see all the time uh, the first full-time female supercars driver. Um, well, n no, she was never full-time. Uh, she drove at Bathurst a couple of times. Uh, Simona would be, you know, if we're talking, f you know, first supercars, uh, you'd, you'd say Simona was the first full-time one. Um, and then people will argue, oh, well, you know, some... Um, Renee did the DVS series, uh, Super 2. Uh, yeah, she did, but even that, uh, uh, the lady called uh, Leanne Ferrier, um, more commonly now known as Leanne Tanda, um, she did a full-time drive uh, back in, I think it was like 2002 or something like that. Uh, so a little bit before Renee. So either way... She wasn't the first, um, and hopefully she's not going to be the... Well, she can't be the last because Simona was the last. The big news from this week is that Channel 10 are not going to televise the supercars anymore. Uh, now, if you've been, you know, uh, frequent on Facebook or something like that for the last uh, however many years the Foxtel deal has been going, you would... You know, you might think that you cannot watch the supercars on free-to-air TV and that Channel 10 does not exist uh, because the amount of people that comment, I can't afford Foxtel, I can't watch supercars anymore. Um, well, a, you'd be pretty hard-pressed to find someone who could not afford Foxtel uh, if they can get themselves on Facebook, which probably means they've got, you know, these are probably people with the latest iPhone um, with, you know, big data plans that can't afford Foxtel kind of thing. Um, yeah, okay, when you, you know, you got to pay for the, the crap package, the sports package, the HD, because, you know, why would you watch it in crap SD if you can watch it in HD? Um, that adds up... In general, it's been around $60 a month, um, depending on what kind of deals you can get at certain times. In general, it's around $60 a month. That works out to about 15 bucks a week. Um, I'm trying to cut back on coffee, and I probably still spend more on coffee a week than what I do on Foxtel. So um, I'm, I'm sure if you broke down what your phone or whatever was costing you a month, you know, um, yes... The Foxtel seems expensive when you never had to pay for TV before, but being a bit on the fence about it at the start, I did get it because I wanted to watch Supercars and F1 and that. Um, the coverage that you get with... You get no ad breaks when the cars are on the track. You get to see every session if you want. I will admit, I'm, I'm obviously, I mean, I do a YouTube channel on this subject. Um... I'm a massive fan of the sport. There is too much to watch. It It is too much. I find myself, even the other weekend uh, at Sydney Motorsport, the, the second round, because uh, I had some other stuff to do during the weekend, I basically only watched the times that the supercars and the Super 2 were on track uh, for qualifying the races. I didn't watch the practice sessions because I didn't have the time because there was too much to watch. Uh, so if you really are a fan of the sport, you juggle, you know, you can buy KO for 25 bucks a month. And as I've said before, you can, two people can watch, that's two, not two, um, two people can watch it at the same time. So you could split that with a mate, $12.50 a month for KO, 
I have tried KO, it does work. I do prefer a Foxtel, so currently I'm sticking with Foxtel. Um, but for $12.50 a month, you know, you could share a KO connection with a mate and get it. There's no reason to complain that you have to pay for it. It's it's not like you're paying $50 a week or something to watch it. It's not an unachievable thing. Um, you know, I can just imagine the, the people who are complaining are probably the people driving, you know, driving around in a big Land Cruiser or Ranger or something like that that chews about 800 megalitres of petrol every 100 kilometres, um, you know, smoking Winnie Blues and, you know, having a couple of slabs a week kind of thing. I'm generalizing a bit here, but you get what I'm saying. You find a bit. Anyway, end that rant. Um, Channel 10 is out. It looks like the racing will go to Channel 7. Um, currently, they're talking about having one race live per weekend. I assume that means that the other races will be a delayed kind of highlights thing. Uh, they're talking the last race on the Sunday, so... To me, that means they're talking kind of with these rumours that this kind of three race format might be happening more. I think it's more going to be the Saturday you'll get a little highlights package at, you know, 11 o'clock at night. Like you, you know, like what we had to do in the dark, dark, dark days of the Australian Touring Car Championship uh, when I was growing up as a little boy. Um, yeah, we used to have to wait till 10, 11 o'clock at night and get an hour highlights package. Um You'll have that on the Saturday night and then probably the Sunday afternoon, they'll probably have a, you know, quick kind of recap of the qualifying session and then they'll go into the live race, um, which that's actually not bad if we're looking at, you know, like a, a two race kind of weekend. Um, that's not a bad setup. And if you can get that, you know, kind of live race on a Sunday afternoon just before the news as people are kind of winding down their weekends, you know, it's hard, but it could, could actually be good for the sport in that respect. Um, and then also you have got the option for people. The, the big thing with pay TV is that you don't get the new fans. Like, if you've got the families that have got Foxtel, you've got the chance of people, you know, watching the supercars on Foxtel. If you don't have, like, someone like me, um, if I wasn't a fan of the sport originally, and uh, if, you know, I didn't have access to it for free, if I had that barrier there with the Foxtel where I had to watch it, um, you know, you probably wouldn't pick up the sport and start watching it. If you've got that where you can watch it on free to air, you don't, you know, you're not outlaying to get to it. Um, you know, you watch it on free, you enjoy it. Hey, let's get Foxtel because I get to watch the whole thing. Um, you know, that's essentially how we all kind of got into the sport. Um, a few, like, you know, my father used to watch um, touring cars back in the day uh, and then you know like Formula 1 and IndyCar and things like that I got into as just like hey you know let's give this other motorsport a try uh, anyway so looks like it's going to 7 um, a lot of people saying that you know supercars you know oh they might not get a good deal because 7's already got you know the TCR um, who did TCR's a nothing thing like Channel 7 probably getting it for free so anyway um the big thing probably with this whole TV is uh, for, for the fan, we're probably going to end up with the same amount of TV, possibly um, even better if you're on the free-to-air stuff. Foxcell, I imagine, you'll end up with the same. The unfortunate thing probably will be the current deal was $241 million over seven years, I think it was. Sounds like a hell of a lot of money. Supercars actually produces all the content to give to the stations. Uh, so it's not like, you, you know, you just get a big check each year for it. Uh, so that costs an amount of money. I imagine that the new deal will probably be somewhere in the realm of what it costs supercars to make it plus, you know, 10% or something, um, which is not so good for supercars and the teams because, the, you know, they might sign it and say, oh, yeah, it's a 200 million 10-year deal or whatever, but, you know, it's it's actually costing us 18 million bucks to produce 
you know, the telecast for the year and we actually put two million bucks in our back pocket, um, I think it's going to be something more like that rather than say like probably the last deal where maybe, you know, they're getting about 33 million, I think it is a year. Um, and you know, it might be costing them 15 million a year and, you know, putting 15 or so in your back pocket or distributing it between the teams plus, um, the folks at Archer Capital. The ranting for this week is not over just yet. Um, a lot of talk about tires and what we should do. Uh, I have no problem with what they did at Sydney Motorsport Park. I think it was great that we tried different things. What people have to remember as well, that we had one round at Sydney Motorsport Park that we were doing all soft tyres and then we were going to Winton and that's why they were having hard and soft tyres to mix it up a bit at Winton. Unfortunately, we couldn't go to Winton because us Melbournians are all infected and we're all going to die. Uh, so they moved around to Sydney Motorsport Park. Dunlop had, you know, they'd kind of got tyres ready for what was happening at Winton. Uh, so they just went, oh, well, we can use those tyres at Sydney. So that's how that came about. It wasn't a conscious decision, let's try this at Sydney. But we tried it. Now, what I'm proposing is that we, we're going to Darwin. We're having two races in two weekends. Uh, why don't we try a f the first weekend, once again, a full soft weekend um i quite like that you know where you have it five sets for the weekend where you really need six for the races do that again and then the second weekend let's do the hard and soft mix again and then we see on a different type of track that hasn't got a heap of degradation how that affects the racing because let's be honest 2020 is an absolute fuck up of the year anyway so if we try these things and it doesn't work doesn't matter too much. Scotty's probably going to win the championship anyway, so it doesn't really affect that as well. You can't then turn around and go, oh, Scotty only won the championship because of what they were doing with the tyres. Well, no, because he's going to win it anyway. So um, chances are he's going to win it anyway. Um, yeah, so that's my opinion. And it's looking likely we might be doing back-to-back -back in Townsville as well. How cool is that? Let's do the same thing in Townsville as well. And then we've got more data to see what works. And this is why I wanted to see, you know, a few things kind of trialed in the E-Series because um, we can see how it works. And, you know, we can we can see how these three shorter races work over different tracks. You know, we've got a fair idea what, you know, like a, a longer Sunday race works like and, you know, one shorter Saturday race. And, you know, we tried that 60-60 thing the other year and people didn't like that. So let's try it over a few rounds. We have a bit of data to work off. We can see if it works or not. We can see that, hey, probably City Motorsport Part 1 had, you know, the better racing overall. It was less confusing for the fans or whatever. So let's do full soft tyre weekends. Or we go, hey, you know, in, in Darwin, the full soft weekend didn't work so good but the you know the different compound weekend that worked really well there and then you know we tried the two at townsville and the different comp let's okay city motorsport park's a bit of an outlier um it doesn't so much work there but if we're going to have consistency over the whole championship let's let's go with the you know the tire strategy that works the best over a whole season the other thing as well is, you know, teams are going to get their heads around using the tyres and, you know, when to use them, when not to use them and things like that. Um, guys will, you know, if someone buggers up their qualifying session on the Saturday, they're going to do a James Courtney and, uh, you know, just try and run one set of hards for the whole race um, and save as many tyres as possible for the Sunday. Um, okay, things like that are going to happen. Uh, Lee Holdsworth qualifies well on Saturday. Uh, he's going to go soft, soft and, you know, go for broke for a podium. Uh, but let's not, you know, let's not go, oh, it didn't work once or whatever. Oh, it was a bit confusing once. Let's, you know, abandon that idea totally. We've got the opportunity this year to try a few different things. Let's try some different things this year. One more final rant for this week. Um, we all know Team 18. Uh, they've set up shop in uh, the Stones Workshop up there in Queensland because uh, all the Melbourne teams, because of uh, deadly flu that it only seems to be affecting us at the moment, uh, 
all of our Melbourne teams have moved up to Queensland now and, you know, they're in temporary digs. So the uh, team 18s at the Stones Workshop and now everyone's saying, oh, they should just swap their, Mus- their Commodores for Mustangs. <laughs> um, well, yeah, okay. It's a great idea in theory, but you do know that Team 18 just buys ready-to-go Commodores from Triple Eight. They don't do much themselves. Uh, so the thing is, is DJ, I'm not interested in supplying anyone with cars. Um, yeah, I mean, they did sell a couple to Matt Stone the other year, but no help whatsoever um i've heard that why the kellys didn't go down the route of anything with tickford was because of the cost um the kellys are trying to sort themselves out so it's not like they have some spares to sell or anything like that uh so team 18 are a bit uh, and also i think charlie has a little bit of uh, friction there with tickford anyway um Team 18, they're quite happy with their deal at the moment. And that's why, like, Team 18 and Team Sydney, um, Matt Stones are all running Commodores. Because they just ring up Roland and go, Hey, I want to buy a Commodore. And he goes, Yep, send me your money. And here you go. Here's a setup sheet with it and whatever. And, you know, off you go. Um, If you want a good setup sheet, give me a bit more money. Um, Yeah. So that's why Team 18 and a few of the others are running Commodores um, because it's just a lot simpler for them. So that's the end of my rants this week. (laughs) Do you agree with what I've been saying? Do you have some different ideas? Uh, Let me know down in the comments. Uh, I've probably got a little special feature hopefully coming up in the next couple of days as well. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, And until next time, I'll see you later.